What's going on guys? Janning Journal's back. We're gonna be doing a lawnmower build series. I'm not sure how many videos it's gonna be. I got all my parts. I got a whole bunch of wheels and tires, all sorts of transmissions, brake parts, axles, hubs, everything we're gonna need. I'm looking to build three mowers, three prepared chassis for the US LMRA rules. First thing uh, about mower racing, if you're new to it, is you've got to find out what the rules are. Build it to the rules, it's going to make everything a lot easier for yourself. Um, you don't want to have to do things two or three times. So find out what your rules are going to be, make sure you're in the specs. Let me go back into my warehouse area back here. Whole bunch of car parts, cans, bottles, random junk. Um, these are my mowers I've been racing for years. Uh, Craftsman's old, I don't know, not early 90s. Some, somewhere around there, all steel, everything's nice, sheet metal on them. Uh, and then I got a little AP here, this is kind of mine, I'm not sure if it's mine or my buddy's yet. Um, but this is what we're going to be building here, some newer style Craftsman walkthroughs, I'm going to keep the Craftsman tradition alive. So these are the mowers before I stripped them, uh, I didn't really show any of that, There's, there was no point, everyone knows how to pretty much, um, you know, take mowers apart, unbolt stuff. Uh, pretty much you use... Basically the body panels, the frame, that's about it. I'm not using the transmissions or anything like that. Um, I saved some of the pulleys, uh, the either pulley specifically, just for extra parts. Maybe a couple wires here and there, fuel tanks, but you're really not saving a whole lot. So in this series, I'll try to go through everything. I know I'm going to forget a lot of stuff that I might just take for granted that it's known. Um, you know, like what type of transmissions. We'll be getting into that. I got some videos on those. What kinds of brakes, you know, hubs, all that stuff, where we get it. A lot of McMaster car I get for, for um, you know, split ring collars, hardware, that type of stuff. Uh, I got some axles. You know, so I'll be talking about all that as I'm, as I'm installing them. Um, got a little AP motor here, overhead valve. Should be nice for this here. So, yeah, I'll try to, try to, you know, put everything in that I can think of. And, of course, I'm looking for you guys to, to put comments, questions, you know, suggestions, anything like that is definitely welcome. So I'm gonna go drag one of those mower frames out, um, put it up somewhere on the workbench, I don't know, set up some, some saw horses or something, and um, let's start. I got a frame up on the bench and the tire and wheel. Um, so the reason I got the tire and wheel is I gotta set my height. USLMRA um, prepared class chassis can be four inches off the ground. I'm probably gonna go like four and a half. Um, so, you know, I just got to do a little bit of simple math, figure out the height of this tire. This is slightly smaller than a Carlisle Turfmaster. This is a Chinese premium. It's just called premium. Um, but I got a little secret for me. The Carlisles are Chinese too. They put the Chinese made in China. I should have showed it before I, I mounted these. They put it right down in here um, where it's covered up by the bead because I have Turfmasters for the fronts and they marked them the exact same way. So you don't see that it says made in China once it's on a wheel. So it's pretty much the same product. I mean, these are $25 instead of, you know, some ridiculous amount. They seem, actually, when I filled them up to 25 pounds to see what size they were compared to a, a Turfmaster, uh, 25 pounds of air for like, you know, IMO purposes, they were much flatter on top. They're slightly smaller, so they, they wouldn't be better for IMO. Um, they have about a one inch you know, the circumference is about one inch smaller, but they, they stayed much flatter and didn't, didn't uh, dome out like, like the Turf Masters did. I mean, it's an old Turf Master, so maybe it's a little bit worn in. But anyways, enough talking about that. So I just got to set my measurements. Also in US LMRA, the axles have to be in the exact same spot. This is where the transmission mounted. So in between those two bolt holes is where I need my axle to be. So I'm going to do some measuring, some math. I'll be drilling holes. Um, and you know, I'm gonna try to do all three at once, do it like a process assembly line, should be a little bit quicker, um, or definitely will be quicker than just doing three from scratch. All right, so I got my axle measurements. That's, that's gonna be the center line of where the axle's gonna go. That little mark, I got it on both sides. Used to be a lot harder to set your axle height in USL MRA rules because you had to stay within the fenders. Um, now you can cut the fenders. So I'm pretty much just setting my ride height for four inches plus I gave it another half an inch. Uh, we race on some rough tracks up here in New England so I'll keep the sprocket and everything half an inch more off the ground. One thing I'm going to have to deal with is uh, this rear drawbar plate. 
Um, as you can see where that line is, it, it goes right here. Uh, so I got to weld a, a bearing hanger on here. Um, it's going to be a lot more work than I would like to do and that I had to do in previous builds. Um, so, so far, I'm not too happy about that, but we'll figure something out. So here's what we got going on. I got my pilot hole drilled quarter inch. I'm going to have to use a hole saw. These are the cassette hangers. These are what these uh, aluminum cassettes bolt onto. The, uh, the bearing just slides in there. Um, so I'm going to have to mount it, you know, something like that. I'm thinking what I might do is, is I might get lucky and be able to go like, go like this and then um, have the drawbar, you know, I'll have to cut parts out of the drawbar. But um, for now, I'm gonna go ahead and get, get my hole saw set up. I'm gonna try to do this on the drill press because doing a whole bunch of hole saw things from the side is gonna be a pain. Um, so I'm gonna try to get that set up. It's gonna look a little funky uh, how I'm thinking I'm gonna do it, but that's my next step. So, I mean, this hole isn't exact to where the axle is gonna be. What's really gonna define where the axle is is where this is weld uh, welded on to the frame. So let's get this hole drilled. All right, well, we got it jigged up. Um, it is in the drill press. I'm gonna go with a, I'm not even sure what size, inch and three eighths drill bit, something like that. Um, a little trick I always do is I don't use pilot bits in my uh, hole saws because you end up just snapping them off. I just use a piece of quarter inch uh, steel. That's all, I just drill it before. So uh, this will let me get some good pressure on it. And um, since it's on its side, I can really flood it with, with uh, some lubricant. I'm just gonna use WD-40. So keep the bit nice and cool. Um, so you save the bit, you save your arm, you save everything. Uh, so, ready to go. I'm just going to be doing this, um, plugging along and just picking up the camera in between. Otherwise, it'll take way too long. I don't have a tripod. Um, so I'm not going to try to get the action scenes. Plus, you guys probably don't want to see those, those cut scenes with corny royalty-free music. And, you know, so I'm just going to plug along and just show you guys how I do it. And, um, hopefully that's, that's good enough. So I, I got my holes drilled, uh, wasn't too bad. That's a pretty interesting shot. So I kind of got lucky. Um, these cassette hangers end up being perfectly concentric um, when I have them exactly on the back of the frame. Uh, that matches my measurement, which is one and 11 16 from the back of the frame to the center. And then this hole will be my center line up and down. I just have to do, I think three and three and a quarter inches up. So, and then just, you know, keep it parallel with the bottom of the frame. It, it, this is actually gonna be pretty easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean the paint off. Uh, and then I'm just gonna probably tack this for now. I don't wanna get too deep because like I said, this is the first of three. So I wanna make sure I get this one good and then I can just do the other two exactly the same. Um, but obviously with this welded and mounted here, I will need to customize the draw bar quite a bit to get it to work. I'm also probably gonna use an angle grinder and continue this hole straight out the back so that I can just take the whole axle out of the back uh, instead of sliding it out one side or the other. So, we'll get to it. Nothing like some really nicely machined parts here. Um, a little hard to do with one hand, but still. So, I'm gonna go ahead and throw these in. Um, we're still like sort of in the mocking stages. I got this tacked. I've got two of the holes drilled through. Um, I don't wanna try to drill that one with just see how it's kinda like sort of lined up with the other hole. I don't want to do that with it tacked. I'm afraid I'll, I'll break the tack if the drill bit catches wrong. So I'm just going to try to catch these things with, uh, catch these with two bolts, throw my axle in, check my height, and uh, that's probably going to do it for this video. Hoping uh, everything works out. And then just do the whole thing two more times. All right, got the frame down on the floor. Everything looks good. I put the front, the front is a little under four inches off the ground. I just got it propped up on a wheel there. And let me get this tape measure out. I'm looking at right about four and eh, four and three eighths of an inch. So looks like I maybe messed up an eighth of an inch. I wanted it an eighth inch higher, but that's completely fine. I'm not gonna change my measurements. I just wanted to give myself a little wiggle room. So uh, as you can see, this is all just tacked on. So I'll take it apart, weld it up. I still gotta drill the bottom hole on both sides. And um, you know, so now that I've got all the tools I need out for this job, I'm just gonna do the same on the other two frames. Not now, I'm gonna call it a night uh, down in the shop. So one more thing real quick, I'll just get into a little bit of details as to what we've got here. Um, eight by eight uh, aluminum wheels, Douglas. Douglas makes them on a four by four. 
so it's four bolt, um, four lugs on four four inch centers. Uh, it looks like these have two bolt patterns. I'm not sure what the other one would be. Inch and a quarter cart axle, and then these are just cart axle, um, you know, the cassettes and bearings. EC Distributing sells the um, sells the hubs. They sell wheels. They had a different brand that weren't polished, so I, I don't know. I just went with these ones, but they sell a, the Van K wheels, um, which are you know I'm sure they're they're just as good. So that's pretty much what we're dealing with for components back here, and I'll be uh, I'll be you know describing what what I'm, what I'm using as I'm using uh, different components such as brakes and other hubs and things like that. Um, these shaft collars I just got on McMaster car. I got the aluminum ones. They cost a little bit more, but eh, they're a little lighter. They look a little better. Um, they're definitely not going to rust up. That's it. That's the first part, uh, first video we're going to do here. I know I didn't get too involved in much, um, but you know, I would say for, for what mowers you should use, I would use whatever is abundant and whatever's cheap. Um, I kind of stuck with a Crassen because that's, that's what I've always run. So it's a little bit of a, I don't know, nostalgia thing for me. Um, but availability is the big thing. I mean, I was looking for these types of Craftsman mowers. I got three of them like within a few days. They're not too expensive. My only hesitation is the front is plastic. I've always run metal hoods up front, but that's hard to find nowadays. Um, these Craftsmans are a little lighter and they're the walkthrough style. Um, they don't have the big tunnel. So that's gonna be a challenge. Um, it's definitely gonna be a little harder of a build than I'm used to, but I think it's gonna be a better product at the end of the day. It's gonna be lighter and um, a little more comfortable, a little more freedom to do what you want with the pedals and stuff, I think, um, with the walkthrough design. So that's gonna do it. Um, I already spent all the money, a lot of money, um, on everything, so I'm committed to doing these mowers. I do have to get this car project going at some point, so you know, I might stop the mowers and um, start on this, and then revisit the mowers, but you know, mowers have to be done for racing season. This thing, I just kinda want done for the summer. So, but we'll figure it out. So anyways, we'll see you guys next time. We're definitely gonna continue with these videos. This is a series we're gonna see through to the end. Catch you guys next time.